Hello, everybody. It's Vicki Lee. If you like my work, please like, share, and subscribe. I've been told I have to say that to get the word out on my new platform. We are going to go to the Bible today, and we're going to talk about surveillance. We're going to talk about being watched and being followed and people watching your every move. I am not here to do a conspiracy theory. I am here to talk about what the Bible has to say about you are going to be watched, you're going to be surveilled. And so this is what you need to do as a Christian because the world is watching. Have you ever seen that, that sign that says smile you're on camera. Well, the Bible just doesn't want you to smile. They want you to be aware that the world is watching. So we're going to go to Acts 24, 16, and we're going to see what it has to say about this. It says, I always do my best to have a clear conscience to do what is right in the sight of God and people. I endeavor to have a clear conscience and to do what is right in the sight of God and people. If you go back to the, uh, the whole series that I did on the righteous versus the fool, I end the righteous audio vid visual with that scripture and it goes into the totality. It is just too beautiful for words. But smile because the world is watching. And don't just smile, endeavor to do what is right before God and before people. I have always said, as the church, we don't always see what the problem is. And I have taught a class and said, if you pulled people in from out of the street, people from the world, and he said, and you said, we need you to tell us what is wrong with the church and what is the antidote for what needs to be done. They would tell you in stunning accuracy. So the world, they're not fools and they're not fooled. And God is not a fool and God is not fooled. When we don't live up to righteousness, when we're doing whatever we want, and if you've heard me talk, I talk all the time about Christians who come to salvation, and that's all they ever get, and they run around saying, that's my dad, I'm in his family, and they do whatever they want, and they mix the world with I've got salvation, and it's this toxic soup, and I've said that's one of the biggest challenges we have true and I just put out before this trusting and I'm saying to the unbeliever trust don't look at a fallen world and don't don't put everything on what you see go to the father son and holy spirit but the world is watching years ago there was an attorney that I would do business with every so often. And he was not a believer. He was very much of the world, rough cut, but he was honest and he was very observant. And I had a mentor that I dearly loved and he had eight children. And one of his sons was in the local area and had a wife and family. And that attorney that was an unbeliever of the world told me one day, he went on and on and on about this man's son. And he said to me, Vicki, he's blameless. He is the most upstanding person. He's, he never lies. He's just, he was so stunned by the righteous. My mentor's son was a righteous man. And that attorney was just hooked on what he saw because you just don't see that in this world. And this attorney had done court cases and he had defended anybody and everybody throughout the years. I'm not downing him. I'm just saying he was attorney. He was in the court system and deals that are made and life. And <laughs> he was had been in the center 
of this world and what it does. And he was taken with righteousness. We're not free to do whatever we want to do. As I teach, these themes overlap, don't they? If you, if you don't listen to the Bible and you listen to my teachings, you'll hear the themes overlap. That's why I do this. So you're being watched if you're in his family. We are not free to do whatever we want. It's for freedom that we have been set free, but that freedom is in Christ. Come to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Abide in them in everything you do, and then do as you please. Because when you do as you please, it will be within the will of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's really where the freedom is. There's that narrow gate. Few go into it. Others go around it. The righteous go into it. We we're talking about trusting the Lord and having security. But the world is watching. They're watching. When I did the speaking on trusting the Lord, I talked about Mahatma Gandhi, one of, of history's greatest examples of peace, enduring peace and suffering to get India to freedom. And he said, I really liked studying Christ, but I didn't like what I saw in his people. It didn't translate from his people. And I talked about how he was negated entrance to a tent revival because his skin wasn't white. It was back in the day where racism was prevalent. And obviously God's people there were some racist people there that said, your skin is not white. You can't come in. And he never came to Christ and he got tripped up because he didn't just stay with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I talked about in the last teaching, but I'm saying we can be tripwires the wrong way. We can push people away from the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So if you have done something or acted out or whatnot, and you have not been a good example, take it to the Lord. Perhaps you need to go back to those people that have watched you do that and tell them that you're sorry and tell them why you're sorry and tell them what it should be and then start acting upon that conviction. Just make sure it's a conviction in your heart. For those of you who don't have Christ, you are watching, aren't you? You are watching. And I always talk about the time frame that we live in are the last of the last days. And we're in that Laodicean era that the Bible says is neither hot nor cold. And it's the church that says, oh, we're rich. And God says, no, you're poor and ragged. And I'm going to spew you out of my mouth because you're not so cold. You won't come to church, but you're not hot enough to be righteous in me. And it's the righteousness that was a stunning example to that attorney, wasn't it? He was watching that man saying, what's he going to do next? Surely this couldn't be real. Show me, show me. And that young man showed him and he was stunned. But the one thing that young man did not do is give him the salvation message, which that attorney needed desperately. So maybe we need to follow that up with the message of Christ so that they can know this is Christ. We cannot assume that the world is taught. I played at a church. I was a fifth girl wheel in a four-man quartet. <laughs> That's always an interesting dynamic, but there was a minister at this church that we would play at every Sunday, and he said, we have these roller skaters that are coming through, and they're, you know, like roller skating and um, through the parking lot, and the deacons were saying, you know, that's a liability issue, and, you know, they're going to tear up the property, and the pastor said, no, this is a mission field. 
So we're going to embrace them and we're going to get to know them. And the pastor came back and filed a report. They asked these young boys, you know, do you, do you know Christ? And they said, no. And they said, well, you know, this is a church. And they said, what is a church? They had no idea of anything. This is why I speak. This is why I quit my daytime job is to come speak every day with very few subscribers starting out. Sometimes nobody's picking it up and listening to it yet, but I stay with it because the word of God will not return void. And we've got to have voices in these last days to reach out not only to Christians who don't really understand the day and age in which we live in, this Laodicean era where we've we're upside down and we think we're right side up. We've got to get flipped back over to do this properly because the world is watching and they need to know because time is going to be up in the near future and the church age will be gone forever. The dispensation of grace will no longer be here. And there's going to be coming a time where wrath is coming and God pulls his family out of danger. And those who aren't of his family are going to be left behind to face the seven year tribulation, which will be hell on earth. We don't want that. God doesn't want anyone to perish. The least we can do with everything. We've been given by God, the son who came and died. Jesus Christ died on the cross. He paid for it all for all of us. All of us. Don't be a tripwire for people the wrong way. Be righteous. Do it properly. Go back and clean it up. If you haven't, I told in one of my speakings here recently about how God told me, go apologize to that girl from high school. Tell her you're sorry. And I took me a while. I was not obedient right away. I eventually wrote a handwritten letter and it changed everything. She needed that because I was a messed up young girl and I had probably heard her or people that she knew around her. And years later, she needed to hear me say, I'm sorry. That's right. So we do our best. Get in God's word. CalvaryChurchFL.com. I'm a broken record with this. They have a teaching library. It's free chapter by chapter, verse by verse. Get in God's word. If you don't have Christ, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. And if you have been watching Christians and they're not showing a very good example and you're put off by it, I'm sorry that you've seen that. I'm sorry. God doesn't approve of that. Judgment starts in the house of the Lord first. That will be judged. But go to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. They're good. They're good. And there's an eternal heritage. He doesn't want anyone to perish. I hope this helps everybody. If you like my speaking, then like, share, and subscribe. Have a wonderful day.